Hi, my name is Tomo Villa. Uh, native name is Huap. Um, come from family of So Happy, uh, Columbia River. Um, grew up in Portland. I now reside in Suquamish, Washington, up by Seattle. I've uh, been there for about six years now. Uh, my art forms that I, I use tends to change. Uh, if, I, if I stick to just one kind of art form, I tend to get burnt out on it. So I move around quite a bit from weaving hats to painting murals to canvases to carving. Um, and then in between that, I like to just hang out and play with my kids. Um, I'll talk about the small one. It's uh, all black, and it's like the deepest black that you can buy, and it references to fishermen, and it's called the Renegade, and they are fishermen at night that fish by just the darkness, and they like to check everyone else's nets, oh, yeah. and so it's based off of those guys on the river, and I've, I've dealt with them quite a bit. Some of them, like family as well, but yeah, it's based off of those guys. So fishing is important to you, yeah? Wow. Yeah. Um, I come from a family called So Happy, mm -hmm. and my great uncle is David So Happy, and I fish with his boys out of Cook's Landing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've spent quite a bit of summers. I haven't been there for maybe about five years, though, but my heart's definitely there. So tell me a little bit about how you know Lillian. Lillian, the first time I met her is when I was competing on a job against her and I lost to her and then we were on a bus ride to look at different sites on the river at the same time and as I was in the van I got the text message that she won it over me. This is a confluence project. No, this was um, a gig for a map project yeah. design uh -huh. and I was all excited. Yeah. It's like, well, Lillian gets it. That's, that's great. She's, she's an amazing person. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I've learned quite a bit from her. She she took me on and just would show me a lot of cool things and take me places a lot and um, go out to a lot of dinners. After a while I felt like her muscle. So what would you say or one of the, something that you learned from her as an artist or as a person? Uh, professionalism. Yeah. Yeah. And what does that mean? Um, pretty much follow through with your word. If you're gonna be an artist and you're gonna tell people you're gonna do something, you should do it. You're gonna show up to something, you should be there early. Um, there was a lot of little things like that. Mm -hmm. How you present yourself, how you talk to people, and then just being out there in the public. Because a big part of being an artist is presenting yourself. Like doing the art is one part of it, and the other part of it is being able to sell yourself as an artist. And so she, she showed me quite a bit of that in the beginning. Um, she introduced me into Confluence Project as well. And so I was in college and then she put my name in a hat and was like, hey, you guys should hire this guy that paints murals and have him go out and paint with kids. And then um, I got to paint quite a bit. I think I did. Didn't you do one at the high school? I did at the high school. I did one at the middle school and one at a grade school they tore down here. Yeah. They tore it down. The May Street, I think that's the one. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. You did three? That's amazing. I did three. I like being home. And yeah, yeah. I like being home. <laughs> and if I can just work from home, that's what I'll, I'll do mostly. So I'm, I'm carving more. Mm -hmm. So do you have a studio at home? I have a long house I use as a studio. Okay. That's 40 foot by 70. That's what was in the video of the Kraken yeah. um, piece that you did. And that's a huge space. It's a huge space. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, and so uh, the, the, the wood that you've got of your three masks are all cedar, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, and, um, and where did that cedar come from? Um, the big mask came from a, a pile, wood pile, right by my house. Uh, the, the tribe there is Suquamish, mm -hmm. and whenever they clear out land, they just pile it up into this one area, and tribal members can go grab what they need, and I went and found like a big chunk. Mm -hmm. 
I split it, and then so that was actually half of a log. And then just kind of just whacked at it, and then it just turned into something after a while. I had no plan for it. So, uh, I recently did a piece for the courthouse, new courthouse in Portland, and it's a big panel piece, and I had to carve it. It's like I think 10 foot round, 10 foot wide 10 by 10 foot. And I have characters that are running across the backs of salmon. And so I kind of had to like really plan that one out and place it out. I think we, we all want to show people who we are. And by that we um, design what we see or what we feel or what's important to us. And so one of the things that I have found that to be important to me is uh, my family and what we do. And so I, I use a lot of that, like Columbia River fishing, and then my times on the river. Um, I see a lot of fishing murals, but it's all based off of history and what we have seen in the past. And then no one really talks about like the fishermen of today. Because we're, we're still here, we're still fishing the rivers, but no one really kind of shows that part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And so I like to go into that and, and bring that to light. I have tons of drawings of pulling gill nets across boats or something like that. It's just a, a different experience when you spend just a lot of time uh, just on the river, day and night. It's exhausting, but there's a, some love to it that like, it's hard to explain where you're on the river and then all of a sudden it's pitch black, but then you see a shooting star go down the river, all the way down. I'm like, wow, that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So your family's from the gorge, from the gorge area originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have a lot of family that's still around? Yeah, here in Yakima and, and Warm Springs mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And are, 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 was art a big part of your growing up? Um, I made it to be, I grew up as a graffiti writer and like I latched on to other kids that were graffiti writers and then growing up in Portland I found other like native kids that were into it as well and we would just spend a lot of time scribbling and painting on things and sneaking around and in and out of train yards and whatnot and I really didn't think that it was going to go anywhere. And at a certain point in life, like I, I was a tile setter and I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to enjoy what I wanted to do. I wanted to do my art because I love to draw. I always grew up drawing and painting on things. And, and so at a certain point, like I, I went back to school and did, did all my art stuff in there. And that's where I came from, from that. So you made a conscious choice I one, did. that you wanted to be an artist. Yeah. yeah. Is, do you feel like storytelling is part of your... Or do you just do that automatically without knowing it? Or does, I think is it, that a conscious... it, it just happens that way because that's what we do. We just tell stories on the river or jokes. Tell a lot of jokes. Some of them aren't appropriate, but... And those come along with stories as well. Um, uncles will tell stories. And they'll tell a lot about what they had to fight for so we could fish, um, the prison time that they had to do for so-called illegal fishing. And so I, I keep that in mind and I'm appreciative of what they had to deal with. And so, yeah, storytelling is a big part of who I am as well. Um, I'll make up stories for my kids and then I'll give them that. And then so they grow up and they have their own story that I've always told them. Every mural is different. Every time I've done one, there's always a different feeling, different story, different kids. Um, and then when I do work with some of the same kids, it's at a different age in their life, and so they're different people. The first time I did the, the mural here at the middle school, I ended up working with the same kids at the high school. And I guess they, they created a mural club. So when they went from middle school to high school, they created a mural club so they could get together and figure out how to paint murals themselves. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how that kind of transpires and like the inspiration that comes with it as well.
that there's power in your murals. I, I feel like, you know, they're not pretty flowers and landscapes and, yeah. you know, there's definitely, you know, a message there, I think. Yeah. The, what I always say is, um, like, I enjoy painting it. It's, it's always a lot of fun and it feels good. And people, they get really into it and I tell them, you know what, I might have painted this, but it doesn't belong to me. And they'll look at me like, what are you talking about? I was like, well, I might not ever come back here again. I might not ever see this mural again. This now belongs to people of this community. And so this is what I'm leaving behind. Like, I might have painted it, but it's still not mine. Yeah. We're really excited to have you here. Thank and you. We're really, really grateful for your work. And it's just beautiful. And, and um, um, I hope we get to see more of you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to thank Lillian. For, for bringing me into the show. She's amazing. She's a very sweet woman.